Today we're going to be talking about the Great Awakening, the New Earth, and the Age of Aquarius, and the astrology behind it all. I'm Sarah Kirby, your Seven Moons Astrologer, and let's just jump right into it. You might have heard some of these esoteric terms floating around on the interwebs lately, like the New Earth. Um, what is the New Earth? What is the Great Awakening? There's no doubt that you're probably feeling that there's a major transformation happening among us all right now. And there's clearly a war of ideas. And I've been doing a great deal of study into the astrology that is unfolding. There's some special things happening in the US in particular, but globally as well, there are some rare, unique, and powerful transits that I want to talk to you about today to explain it all and hopefully end some of the fear mongering that I think is happening out there uh, as well as make you clearly aware of really what's going on and what the purpose of all of these energies are in the collective. And uh, so this is going to be more of a collective discussion. I know I typically do like personalized energy readings, uh, but I think this collective astrology is really, really interesting. But if you are interested in how these personal energies play out for you, which is of course unique to each of us based on your natal chart, I do offer natal chart readings. You can find those in the link below. So um, before we begin with the discussion of the powerful transits that we have, I thought I would just quickly explain some of the basics of the chart that we're talking about here and um, where the positioning is uh, in the sky. So some of you might already be familiar with this, but if you're not, I'm just going to do a quick run through of what you're seeing in the astrology. So this is the 12 sign zodiac in its native form with the mundane transits currently present. What is a mundane transit? That is where the planets are in the sky today, which signs they're occupying. So um, we have, if Aries is positioned as the first house, meaning at the position right at the horizon, then we have Uranus in Taurus in the second house, a major player. The North Node, which represents uh, the direction society is moving in the third house, Gemini, which means by default that the South Node, what we're releasing, what we are letting go of by default would be in Sagittarius. I just don't have the glyph. And then we've also got uh, the sun right now, which is about to exit Leo and move into Virgo. It's in the last anoretic degrees of Leo at this point. Uh, then we have Mercury and Mars in a conjunction in Virgo right now. So that's going to come up later because at the end of this video, we'll talk about Sunday's powerful full moon in Aquarius. It's a double um, moon in Aquarius that we've got. A blue moon only happens every couple of years. So this is a rare and powerful alignment. So stick around to the end of the video for that because this is innately involved. And then we've got Venus and Libra, Pluto and Capricorn, really important right there. And then we've got Saturn and Aquarius, key player this year, Jupiter, the full moon coming up in Aquarius. This is the chart for Sunday and Neptune in Pisces. The last one that I'd like to remember to mention to you is that Chiron, whose glyph I just lost literally right before I started filming this video, is in Aries right now. So that's going to come up a little bit later. And that's a quick explanation of what we have going on if you've never seen that before. So let's just dive right into it. First major thing that's happening today is specific to the US. The United States has a chart, a natal chart for the country as a whole, the region as a whole. And right now, the US is experiencing its Pluto return. So the chart for the US has Pluto in Capricorn. And Pluto is today in Capricorn completing its transit for the U.S., making a Pluto return. A Pluto return in Capricorn is very specific. So let me just talk to you a little bit about what that means. Pluto is the planet of extremes. It's the planet of transformation, the death and rebirth cycle. So whatever must die in order for the new to be born is the realm of Pluto's energy. It also rules uh, research and investigation into the truth. It it, um, it rules the occult, it rules sex, it rules our deepest core wounds, our intimacy, and uh, really intense themes. It's intensity. It natively rules Scorpio. And so, um, you know, Scorpios are rather intense, right? That is their ruling planet. And in Capricorn, Capricorn is the energy of hierarchy rules, structure. This is Saturn's domain. This is regulation. This is leadership, authority, right? Pluto, that's manipulation, control. So when the two come together and we have a Pluto return, 
This is the ending of a Pluto cycle. This is the death of all the old themes around rule, regulation, authority, so that something new can be transformed and born in the area of Capricorn, right? A new rule, a new earth. So we'll talk about that new earth concept a little bit later. That's the first major transit. You know, when the U.S. goes through something that's going to populate across the world, uh, because the U.S. has historically been a thought leader for culture and civilization, I'm not saying it's always right. And I definitely know um, all the harm that the U.S. has done. But Pluto is concerned with the truth. So the truth has to come out at this time. The corruption will be exposed and the veils are being lifted, right? Because that is the function of a Pluto return in Capricorn, which is happening for the U.S. chart right now. So that's the first thing that I really thought was important to share about this great awakening, because that power and control, that manipulation of authority, that manipulation of um, the structures that we have in place, the society, the government, it, I mean, it's literally... Pluto and Capricorn. It can't get any more explicit than that. So as Pluto works to ensure that everything that must be revealed is revealed in the name of truth and that everything that hasn't served, that hasn't worked, that's wrong and corrupt dies and falls away so that a new rule can be born. That's exactly what we see with the U.S. chart right now. So uh, that's the first one I wanted to share with you. Secondly, we have this year's hot topic. It's Saturn square Uranus. So um, this aspects our charts differently depending on who you are and what your signs are. But uh, collectively, this is the powerful push and pull energy between uh, freedom and liberation, change and innovation. That's Uranus's influence and structure. That Capricorn energy, right? Because that's what Saturn is. Structure, rules, regulations, restrictions, delays, limitation, hard work. That's the influence of Saturn. When they come together in a square, that's the most challenging 90 degree angle between two planets. That is most notably, you know, when you get the hard intensity, sometimes negative outcomes in the world and in our personal lives. Um, and Uranus and Saturn can't be any more different during this time when they come together in a square. So where are they located and what does this mean um, in the collective? So in the native zodiac, Uranus is in Taurus. So Taurus is the ruler of the second house. Taurus is associated with what makes us comfortable, what makes us secure. It rules the body. So what we eat, it rules... Um, food and restaurants in that way and it rules um, money because its ruler is Venus and the second house is the house of finance so Uranus comes in and its influence on a collective level is to disrupt all that makes us comfortable in terms of our finances, where we get our food from, right? As you can see, uh, restaurants have been closed down around the world. They're being locked down. And that's that Saturnian influence, that restriction combined with the uh, Uranian disruption of what makes us comfortable. Uranus is responsible for change, chaos, disruption, but it's also known as the Great Awakener. So everything that Uranus does serves to innovate, serves to awaken, serves to show you what really needs to change and force you to look at it if you have been able to ignore it in the past. So it definitely takes away everything that makes you comfortable and secure, especially in the sign of Uranus. So people's incomes are in the sign of Taurus. So people's incomes have been um, completely taken from them. They've not been able to work. They've not been able to make money in the same way. They've not been able to get food in the same ways that they normally have. Um, it's caused a lot of people to think about where do I get my food from and how can I make sure that my access to food and money is sustained. Um, those are the topics that Uranus brings to the forefront in Taurus right now. And then with Saturn's influence, Saturn is in Aquarius, right? So what is Aquarius? What is that energy? It's a big topic this year because we've got so much Aquarian energy going on. But Aquarian is actually 
what Uranus rules natively. So traditionally, in traditional astrology, Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius. So before we knew about the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Saturn was deemed the ruler of Aquarius. And that still holds water, even though today we also consider Uranus to be the modern day ruler of Aquarius. So this energy is super, super intense because Saturn can work its energy well in the sign of Aquarius. It's at home. That's its domicile. That's that rigidity of the Aquarian energy where it's cool and distant, but it's also stubborn and not going to change its mind. You know, it's very different. It's very unorthodox. It's very original, but it won't be forced to do things in a way that it doesn't want to do them. So that's that Saturn influence there. And on the collective level, we have to see what is Saturn's influence here. Aquarius rules science. It rules dogma. It rules uh, grassroots society, altruism, humanitarianism, original free thought, independence, freedom. So when Saturn comes in, it actually restricts the energy of freedom. It restricts the energy of originality. It restricts the energy of that which is awakening us, right? Because that is the Aquarian influence traditionally viewed or modernly viewed by Uranus. So the thing that actually stands out to me here is the way that science and logical thought is being used to push a restrictive, heavily regulated ideology for the good of humanity. That's Saturn and Aquarius. It can't get more clear than that. Listen to this school of thought. There is no other way than this school of thought. This is science. This is truth. This is dogma. And if you don't subscribe to these ideals, you are not acting in the good of humanity. That's what Saturn in Aquarius is saying. But at the same time, Saturn in Aquarius is restricting your freedom. Saturn in Aquarius is restricting your independence. Saturn is squaring Uranus to shake up your freedom, to limit your security, to take away what makes you comfortable about society so that it can so that it may impose more of its energy and it's an energy of restriction it's an energy of locked up that's what it does it locks it up so you can obviously see how um what we're experiencing today in society without using too many of the key words that would get this video censored is acting out those themes the square is hugely important this year as it oscillates um, back and forth between exact and, you know, in an orb. It's had peaks around um, early this year, February, March. And then, of course, it peaked again this summer, June, July. And the last time this energy will peak in an exact aspect is in December. And we will feel it build all throughout November and fade out in January of next year. So it's peaking at the end of December. And you can expect things to ramp up again as that um, battle between the freedom, the, the free original thought, and the rules and restriction of a limited society kind of fight back and forth to achieve humanitarianism. What I think is important to mention about this energy is the fact that Uranus rules Aquarius. So Uranus wants to act in the good of all humanity. It wants to be altruistic. It is in favor of a grassroots society. They both have the same aim, but the way that they go about it is completely different. So we're having a, a battle there. And in our personal lives, this of course makes us want to change things up or forces us to change change things up in the name of greater liberation in our lives so um, but we're being forced to do it slowly because saturn's influence is over a 30-year cycle so the changes that we make in society today are going to have a lasting impact for the next three decades if you combine that with the pluto return that the u.s is uh, experiencing then obviously you see the themes of corruption being exposed transformed um, the old rule in Capricorn is dying so that a new rule can be born uh, and and hopefully this is one that uh, brings our society to a more uh, collective united yet personal liberty 
as a key value because that really is what Aquarius is. It's the understanding that personal and individual originality and liberty is what leads to the collective good. That is how you achieve the ideal humanitarianism among society. So that's what we have to see there. Um, moving on, it's some more Aquarius because the third major aspect that is really influencing uh, the, the nature of our time right now is the great conjunction that happened in 2020. The great conjunction of 2020 had Uranus back in Aquarius with, with um, oh, I'm sorry, it had Jupiter and Saturn in a conjunction in Aquarius. This was huge. It doesn't happen very often. This was part of a grander 200 year cycle that um, is going to play out at least in part for the next 20 years as Jupiter goes around. Oh, there's a butterfly. Um, and so what, <laughs> I hope you saw that. So what that is about really, when Jupiter and Saturn came together in a conjunction, meaning they were together in the sky, this was huge news, you probably heard about it, December of 2020. This is when Jupiter's energy and Saturn's energy are going to come together to sort of duke it out <laughs> over the next 20 years. Saturn, we explained in Aquarius, its influence is obviously one that wishes to um, spread rigid dogma um, and impart its restriction and control and rules and regulation. That's not Jupiter at all. Jupiter is expansive. Jupiter is optimistic. Jupiter wants to grow. It wants society's consciousness to grow and to elevate and to expand. That's the function of Jupiter. So its function is similar to what Uranus's end goal is. And that is a society that is full of positivity and hope. And it brings out the positive elements of the Aquarian energy. You know, Aquarian, it's got positive and negatives, like every sign, dogmatic, but altruistic, right? So Saturn pushes the dogma as the great malefic and Jupiter pushes the altruism as the great benefic, right? They come together and over the next 20 years, they will reform society. They will reform society. So the coming together of those themes in December, 2020 is sort of what kicked off a major cycle to, to transform society for, based on how we respond, hopefully the good of mankind, right? And hopefully more aligned with that Jupiterian energy, one which is about uh, freedom, because Jupiter is also a freedom seeking sign. It's a freedom, adventure, forward thinking, expansive energy. That's Sagittarian energy. It needs to be free. And so it really is well united with that uh, Uranus motivation. So I hope these things can overpower the Saturnian influence, but um, the Saturnian influence is obviously going to act over the next 20 years. And there's going to be this um, fight between the positivity of Aquarian energy and the negativity of Aquarian energy. And that's sort of what the age of Aquarius really is when you think about it. It's moving into um, a new type of society that is built from the ground up. Next, the other aspects that we have to talk about here are actually related to the nodes, the North Node in Gemini and the South Node in Sagittarius. This has happened, this has been happening since May of 2020. That's when the nodes moved into their current positions. The nodes in astrology are uh, calculations of where the eclipses will be and when. The North Node relates to our direction and purpose and aim in our personal lives and also in our collective society, while the South Node relates to what we are releasing and what we are letting go. And so, you know, it's energy that we are not really accessing right now, so to speak. And these energies are really important because they are periods of extreme faded events. They are inherently tied to the eclipses. They're predictors of the eclipses. And the eclipses are some of the most strong energy in astrology, which describe fate, destiny, things that we agreed to experience when we incarnate, things that we signed up for that we can't really get out of. 
I do not take the fatalistic view of astrology. I think that we have co-creation ability, but when the energy of fate steps in so strongly as it does in the instances of eclipse, or when we're talking about the nodes, fate is in the driver's seat, right? So what is this doing in our society? With the North Node in Gemini, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. This is the energy of the intellect, ideas, communications, messages, the media. The media is ruled by Gemini. So right now with the North Node there, what we're seeing, of course, is a, a birthing of a new way of communicating. Everybody's remote. We have all of this online communication. And, and I should mention that that's inherently related to the Uranus activity and the Aquarian energy as well, because Uranus and Aquarius are rulers of technology. That's Those are Aquarian Uranian themes, technology and innovation. So when we've got all this energy combined, we see the North Node in Gemini completely transforming the way that we communicate. There's so many messages flying around. All we can do is just talk, 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 talk over the phone, online, and the media is, of course, a very prominent theme of the past year and a half, where it's subject to the scrutiny of the fight between Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter the fight between Saturn and Uranus, the energy of the Pluto return, where the corruption of the media is exposed, and new kinds of media are being birthed all the time, right? Uh, new social media platforms, new ways of connecting with one another, and that's really the major theme of the collective society. But when we talk about the South Node, so if we move this upside down and put it in Sagittarius, ex exact opposition to the North Node, well, Sagittarius rules the long distance travel, adventure, connecting with foreign cultures, connect connections with higher education, philosophy, freedom of thought. Those things are all suppressed in society right now. Obviously with the lockdowns, no one's been able to travel. There's been restrictions around uh, long distance travel, an inability to connect with foreign cultures, um, a suppression of positive themes of connection with spirituality and higher wisdom. The literal shutdown of college education and the moving of it to remote learning, right? So, you know, we see th those themes play out clear, very clearly. So that's another major one that is responsible for the energy of our times collectively right now. So, um, Lastly, we've got this big full moon coming on Sunday, right? Which is why I'm filming this video right now. So it's a special one because several things are happening. Lastly, we, you know, last month we had a full moon in Aquarius and it's pretty rare that you would get back-to-back -back full moons in the same sign. It's called the blue moon and it happens only about every two and a half years. This one is special, I think, because it's happening in Aquarius where all of this energy is like really focused, right? So what are the odds of that? Nothing is coincidence, right? Nothing is coincidence. The second one is coming at an extremely potent time because Uranus just stationed to go retrograde this week. On August 19th, it's stationed in the sky, meaning it's still in the sky before it changes directions from the perspective of Earth. So from now on, for the next five months, it's going to be moving backward in the sky. What that does is it intensifies Uranian themes. It intensifies chaos, disruption, change. It helps to liberate us from old ways of being what we need to lay to bed so that we can continue to awaken is intensified by the Uranus retrograde. And usually what it does is it really internalizes a lot of that energy too. So many of us will see literal chaos and disruption and change in our lives physically or literally, but we're going to be doing a lot of changing our minds, thinking about things differently, encountering new perspectives that shift our entire worldview rebelling against a way that we used to be, rebelling against circumstances that we feel we just can't deal with anymore. Restrictions and limitations in our lives 
that we don't want to put up with, right? So on the collective level, you're seeing an increase in freedom rallies, protests, rebelling against rules all over the world, right? That's what Uranus retrograde will do. And so this period is active and intensified at the exact same time that we have the full moon happening. So the full moon is happening at 29 degrees Aquarius. That means that the moon is at 29 degrees Aquarius and the sun is directly opposite it at 29 degrees Leo. This is crucial because Leo is the thought leader. Leo is the energy of the lion, the open heart leader. Leo is the energy that shines brightly where the individual is of the utmost important, right? Because Leo energy, when it's taken to extreme, is the energy that leads to narcissism. It's the energy that is egotistical a little bit when it is pushed to the extreme. But the, um, the virtue of Leo is the individual and the individual creative expression, right? It's the sun. So you have that opposing the moon in Aquarius and this energy is conjunct Jupiter, which just retrograded back into Aquarius not too long ago. So it's really important because Jupiter here gives a positive boost of optimistic momentum to the energy that is motivated by freedom for the individual. Freedom of the individual. That's what Leo and Aquarian energy do together. That's what that full moon is about. So it adds po positive momentum. It adds hope. It adds power to the expansion of those Aquarian themes with Jupiter's influence right there, right? Jupiter is expanding on this energy and it's also a blue moon. It's the second run through this Leo Aquarian moon energy. And of course there can be an expansion of things we don't like as well, right? Because Jupiter expands, right? So it's it's gonna add to the good. It does mostly good things, but it can also expand on things that we don't love, like um, too much use of technology. On an individual level right now, if you're feeling like you can't get off your phone, you can't get off the computer, or if you're glued to the screen, collectively that is a theme right now as well because Jupiter is expanding on Aquarian ideas. It's also expanding on um, our consciousness, it's expanding on rebellion and it's expanding on revolution. That's Aquarius, revolution. So all those themes are ignited right now. And it's important that it's happening at the anoretic degrees. Anoretic degrees are the final degrees of a sign. Okay? They take the energy of that sign to an absolute extreme. When you have any planets at that final 29th degree, it's let me take this energy as far as it will go. Let me express this energy to its fullest potential before it dies off and moves to the next sign. So, you know, it could not be more intensified what we're experiencing on the earth right now. And it's adding um, the fuel necessary to take this movement to where it will go in December, where we have the final square between Saturn and Uranus for this period of time. So. Um, that's a little bit about what this full moon means. It really is a period of intense, chaotic awakening all over the world, all over the world. So, um, you know, that's what the, the Great Awakening is all about. And these are the astrological components that are influencing the energy of our times. So what do people say when they mean new earth? We're going to the new earth. We're creating the new earth. There's a lot of fear mongering around what that can look like and how that might manifest on the earth. And I, I think it goes without saying that, you know, bad things can happen. And I don't want to, you know, ignore the fact that there is going to be a great degree of chaos and disruption continuing on the planet that affects a lot of people. Um, really, there there's also a, a great de deal of potential for, um, more fighting. And the reason why I say that is because Chiron, which is the 
um, asteroid, I don't have the glyph, it's the asteroid related to um, the acute wounds that we experience in our lives and in the collective that um, actually empower us to heal the world once we're able to heal ourselves of that issue. And so Chiron is in Aries right now. And Chiron rules, or I'm sorry, um, Aries rules war, fighting, weapons. It's that fiery energy of war. So, you know, those things are all a potential right now. Uh, it's a potential for ideological war. We see that already manifesting. It's a potential for uh, literal and physical war. We see some of those things happening in the Middle East right now, right? It's a potential for civil war. It's a potential for all sorts of um, Aryan themes like that. There uh, is definitely more potential for your security around food and uh, money to be disrupted with Uranus in the second house. But I think the overarching message is that uh, you need to focus your energy where you want it to go. So it is not wise to ignore the possibility right? You need to be awake, aware, and prepared. But it is not wise to focus too much energy into outcomes you do not wish to see in your personal life or in the collective, right? Because where you focus your energy personally is what you see manifest out in the collective. So you want to hone in your energy on what you want to create. What kind of new earth do you want to experience? I don't believe that we're going to magically transcend into a new planet or that aliens are going to come down and pick us up on a ship and bring us to a different planet and that's the new earth could all of these things happen i guess please show me them happening but what i think this this astrology is meant to do is to motivate and awaken the human population to create the new earth that we wish to experience in alignment with Aquarian themes. These are the grassroots societies. These are purchasing local, buying local, sharing with your neighbors, uniting in community, the altruistic energy that unites us all with ample space for freedom, individuality, originality, and innovation, using our technology for good rather than evil returning to a new kind of rule, a rule by the people for the people, the way it is supposed to be, right? Power to the people energy. That is what the new earth is going to look like. And the route to get there is going to continue to be bumpy. It's going to intensify in December. But I think my overarching message is to hold the energy of the world that you want to see in your personal life and in the collective. You can't be afraid, you know, the last thing is that you can't be afraid to speak your truth, right? That's, that's all that Leo energy, this moon, right? So stand empowered in what is true for you and be bold to share it. Rebel against whatever is telling you, you cannot be what you want to be, you cannot say what you want to say, you cannot live as you want to live. That is the best way to use this moon to harness that rebellion, that re revolution energy for the freedom of self and the heart purposeful expression of the individual that uh, benefits us all, really, because that is, you know, what will unite us and create this this new earth. So, you know, that's a little bit about the energy behind our times, the great awakening um, there's a lot going on right now. So if you like this video, if it helped you to understand what's upon us, like and subscribe, leave me a comment below. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye.